Hello, everybody. It's Lillian Riki here from Parent Support Network coming in today with Parent Support Network TV episode number Hello 43. Everybody. It's Lillian Riki here from Parent Support. It is awesome to be here on this beautiful, beautiful spring Gold Coast day today. So today my um, discussion has come out of um, something from our Nurtured Heart Approach Trainers Group where our amazing mentor Howard Glasser answered the question for somebody around, you know, what is, um, some, what, what is really unique about Nurtured Heart Approach as opposed to other methods of parenting? And he chatted about the difference between behavior management versus um, inspiration management or behavior inspiration. So I actually looked up what behavior management me meant. It actually says behavior management is about guiding your child's behavior towards appropriate ways of behaving. Well, that sounds pretty good. A positive and constructive approach is the best way to guide your child's behavior. This means giving your child attention when they behave well, rather than punishing your child when they do something you don't like. Once again, that sounds great. Uh, when you do think about the word management though, the word management, if you think about it as a noun, is the process of dealing with or controlling things or people. And I guess when it comes to parenting and to relationshiping with our children, we perhaps don't really want to be controlling them to manage their behavior and if you ask yourself if your behaviors are inspiring or controlling and probably with the understanding that your kids you know will want to run the other way if you are too controlling so behavior inspiration as opposed to behavior management so behavior management is kind of like managing the behavior so whenever a child is um, acting or behaving inappropriately or breaking rules or, you know, or being disrespectful, not listening um, for et cetera, we are, as, a, as behavior managers are wanting to manage that behavior to stop that behavior um, and hopefully for that behavior not to happen again, um, which I guess, you know, many of us parents uh, spend much time doing. But if you think about the difference between behavior management and behavior inspiration, so rather than trying to manage, which is the process of dealing with or controlling things or people, what if we try to inspire our children, inspire our children to be the greatness that they and we want them to be, inspire them to be the greatness of being cooperative, of being kind, of being thoughtful, of being respectful of being um, generous of you know showing great self-control of you know listening and and you know viewing other people's points of views and perspectives etc so we're wanting to really inspire them to be the best that they can be to really bring out their greatness so in the nurtured heart approach which is something that I'm super passionate about if you don't know that already we talk about something called inner wealth. So we all aspire as parents to help our children have good self-esteem and self-worth. And we work towards that in, in any which way that we can. But for me, and you know, under the, the nurtured heart approach framework, inner wealth is a whole lot more than that. So for me personally, when I think of inner wealth, it's actually helping the child to see the amazing person they are. So it's through building, yes, self-esteem and self-worth, including in that self-respect and self-love and having that child grow, knowing that they have the greatness of all of these amazing things in what we in there, once again, in their um, in nurtured heart terms, call in their portfolio. So if you imagine um, a child from birth being given a big portfolio like if you imagine like an artist portfolio or something like that and usually you know if an artist is taking their portfolio to show somebody um, their work they're probably not going to put as many of the pieces in that don't really show who they are as an artist or that they didn't feel good about they're going to put in 
their best pieces, the pieces that they feel are inspiring, that they feel, you know, says something about who they are as an artist. So, so many people today, both children and adolescents and adults are carrying around a portfolio with them, not physically, but, you know, pretty much it's with them all the time, a portfolio of I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I don't behave well enough. I'm not liked. I'm not lovable. I'm always getting into trouble. Um, I'm not pretty enough. I'm not thin enough. I'm not, you know, capable enough. I, I make a lot of mistakes. I can't control myself. I have a a dysfunction or a disorder of some sort that I've been told I have because the doctor said so and I need pills to make it better. You know, there are so many things that we can be carrying around in our portfolios that tell us that we're not a person of greatness, that we are not that person that we really aspire to do. So through behaviour inspiration, what we want to do with an, um, using the model of the nurtured heart approach is to use every opportunity whilst our kids are growing to uh, inspire them through their behaviour. So to look for the things that they are, that are showing signs of their greatness or their great qualities. It doesn't mean that in that moment they have to be perfectly behaving in a certain way to acknowledge their greatness they could be taking even the baby a step towards that, even if in seconds or minutes prior, they were really escalated and yelling and screaming and angry and throwing things. But, you know, in this moment, I can see you starting to calm yourself down. And that really shows me that you have great self-control. I can see that you're now looking at me. And that really shows me that you are being very respectful in this moment. And I really appreciate that. So looking for every opportunity to, to tell our children, to inspire them to want to behave in a certain way. So to build them up so they do see themselves as I am the greatness of being respectful. I am the greatness of being a kind and thoughtful person. I am the greatness of being able to calm myself down when I get angry or escalated. I am the greatness of being able to reset myself when I do muck up, when I do break a rule, when I do lose control for a moment, but I can then I can then reset myself and come back into a positive place. We want to inspire our children to be the best that they can be, not because we're managing them, not because we're controlling them and um, punishing them or you know focusing on the things that they're not doing well, but because we're helping to aspire in, or inspire them to be the greatness of that attribute, whatever that is, that we are um, helping them to grow in the moment. So that by the time, you know, they're taking their portfolio through their toddlerhood, through their childhood, through their, you know, young teenage years and their adolescence and their early adulthood into adulthood, that they have this portfolio full of qualities of greatness that they see in themselves and why do they see that in themselves? Because we, their parents, uh, their caregivers, their educators have told them time and time and time and time and time and time again over the days, weeks, months and years that they do have this greatness, that they are a person of integrity, that they are a person who shows respect and is thoughtful and kind and considerate. Yes, we make mistakes. Yes, we muck up. Yes, sometimes we break rules. But you know what? We know that we can reset and come back into that place of the, of the greatness that we know that we are. So I thought that was a really great topic today, behaviour management versus behaviour inspiration. I, I'm so passionate about the Nurtured Heart Approach. If you have listened to any of my, my um, TV episodes or my podcasts or my interviews, you will know how passionate I am about the Nurtured Heart Approach and how I really now want to just share this with every single parent, caregiver, educator I can to help inspire positive behaviours and attributes and qualities of greatness in our children and in each other, right? Um, just because we're all grown up doesn't mean that we can't inspire each other 
um, to 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 our greatness and to seeing ourselves as that amazing you know person that that we are and that we we all can be right um more recently i've come to realize in my parenting work that there are so many parents out there well it's not recent really it's been over over decades but i think more than ever today that there are more parents struggling with um their parenting and that, that's a really general term i know but in the way that they're relationshiping and dealing with their children how that how they're responding to their children and then hence how their children are responding back to them because that's what a relationship is right we we communicate back and forth and if we are responding to our children and to their behaviors in a way that doesn't aspire or inspire greatness or you know building up of those positive qualities then we're going to get the exact exact opposite right if we're giving more attention and connection and relationship to what we don't want to grow I talk about this so much but in our recent times I've come to realize you know particularly throughout my parenting groups that some dads I won't say all dads some dads are uh, are needing to or wanting to really step into more of their parenting. Uh, there is still a bit of a, a paradigm or a, a generational thought process out there, even in 2022, that, you know, the dad's role is to go out and work and earn an income and their role in parenting and, you know, acknowledging children and behavior inspiration maybe should be left more up to to the mum but you know what dads kids need your interaction and your relationship and your connection so much they really really do and I understand that you're busy you know that you're out there making a living that you're providing for your family which is is your way of showing your family that you love them and that's important but giving relationship really connected and juicy relationship to your kids and to your partner as well and to yourself is really really important so what I have been um, inspired to, um, to work on is a masterclass for all parents and for all care caregivers of children, but with a real emphasis on dads. So every child wants their dad to be a superhero. And isn't that right? Like our kids do want, well, they really particularly want their dads to be their superhero and they want that connection. So, you know, connect with your kids in a way that will bring out their best and yours so it's not just about bringing out the best in our children but it's about bringing out the best in ourselves as parents in mothers in mums and dads um, so that if we're bringing out our best then we can parent and relationship better and have greater and better relationships I did um, I did a post um, last night after uh, like a Facebook post I was just really inspired to share it so if you haven't checked that out yet please feel free to go and do so on my um, on my uh, regular Lillian Riki parenting strategies page because we had dinner last night and we always sit down at the table to have dinner together and we sat down and had dinner last night I cooked a nice vegetarian roast and um, after dinner the boys got into some conversations and I was listening and I was still interacting, but it was really a conversation that let's just say it was kind of a male conversation. They were talking about kind of boy stuff, but I was just sitting back and I kind of had tears come to my eyes and I was so inspired watching and listening to them, the way that they were interacting and the way that they were communicating and respecting each other's thoughts and views and points of view the way that they um, um, looked at each other and, you know, really, they were all really enjoying the conversation and each of them were really, you know, piggybacking off the, the other's thoughts and, and ideas. And it was just so beautiful to, to actually sit back and listen to. And I know that, you know, years ago, we would never have dreamt that that could have been a possibility um, when our son was um, revolting as such as a young teen, uh, things were pretty strained and stressed and our relationships were far from positive. All of our relationships were strained. Of course, our relationship with our youngest son was strained because of his challenging behaviours, but the way that, then that we responded to his behaviours 
our relationship with our eldest son was was not positive or good either because we were giving so much of our attention and energy and connection to all the negativity that was going on with his younger brother that we kind of forgot about him he was a good person a good kid he was quiet and compliant and cooperative but he kind of didn't get much attention or relationship because his younger brother demanded so much so therefore there was resentment you know between the brothers their relationship wasn't fantastic because they were so different all of our interconnected our my husband and my relationship was strained because of the stress of what was happening in the family um, and my husband was stressed about the way our son was behaving and particularly about the way our youngest son was treating me and of course I was his favorite toy so I got all the the you know the the backlash and the negativity and then of course I didn't know how to handle it right I was parenting so upside down I was giving more attention and energy and connection and relationship to things that were going wrong instead of inspiring you know um positive attributes and things that were going well and I'm sure there were but we just weren't focusing on them so it's something that I'm really, really passionate about. So no matter where you are in your parenting relationship journey, if it's good or great or amazing or fantastic, or maybe you feel like it's not as good as it could be, it's strained, it's, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's not as loving and connected as you'd like it to be. No matter where you are from that scale of really struggling to, yeah, I'm doing okay, I really believe that um, what we're going to share on our parenting masterclass on uh, Monday, the 7th of November at 7.30 p.m. Queensland time will really benefit you uh, in so many ways. It's going to be really male focused. So other than myself um, on, the, on the masterclass, we're going to have my husband, Andrew, who's going to share um, from his perspective, because I usually share from my perspective, but he's going to share from his perspective our journey with our son and how stressful it was, but then what transpired to really turn that around and then where their relationship is today, which is a beautiful relationship. You can come along and listen to the masterclass. I have Kerry Wilson, who is one of our current um, parents in our Parenting Nurture Your Heart to Greatness course, 24-week course that we're currently doing. And he's going to come on and share from his perspective of learning the Nurtured Heart approach with me. And then I have a couple of amazing colleagues from the US, um, Brian and Freddie, who have used the Nurtured Heart approach both in their work uh, and in their personal lives as well. And they're going to share how impacting it is to be able to use the Nurtured Heart approach to build a positive and loving and connected relationships. So I'm super excited about that. I hope you can come and join us. Um, even if you just pick up one little thing that can help you to, to um, notch up your relationships, then it will be worth it. Um, I'll pop the registration link by, below. And by regis registering, um, well, one of two things, um, it will be a benefit to register. Firstly, uh, you will be kept informed and be given all of the details for the masterclass. Like um, we're going to have a Zoom link for those who want to jump on Zoom. We will be running it live out of this group too, out of the Parent Support Network uh, Facebook page. Um, but if you register, you will also, and, and you attend live, you will also go into the draw for some great prizes that we will be offering on the night. And we will also have an amazing early bird offer for those who are inspired to work further with us at the conclusion of that masterclass. So it's going to be action packed with so much positive um, information and yeah, just something for you really to think about. And dads, please come and jump on. If you're listening to this and you are a dad, I encourage you, I urge you to come and join us. If you're a mum, um, encourage the dad in your children's lives to come and join us and just share with any other families, any other dads, any other educators who are working with children or caregivers of any, any sort who are working with children can benefit for the, from, from joining us. But it's going to have that real emphasis on parenting from a dad's perspective. So thank you so much for joining me today and listening in. I'd love to hear some comments below on um, your thoughts on the difference between behavior management versus behavior inspiration and until next time um, bye for now Lily and Riki parenting strategist from parent support network 
uh, equipping parents to enjoy happy and healthy children and relationships on purpose. Bye for now.